Mr. Humphreys, are you free? I'm free. Forward, please. Mind the door. What? Are you being sir, sir? I'm Humphreys, and I'm free. Are you being sir, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming trunks, we've got them plain or spotty. We've also got some see-through that really tan your... Beach wear. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around the back. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic mag. Whoops! Are you being so-so? I'm Humphreys and I'm free. Are you being so-so? What would you like to see? Mrs. Crawford? Yes, Miss Nichols? There's an old fellow over there hanging around. Where? Oh, of course, this being your first week, you wouldn't know. That's our Mr. Bone, he's the owner. Uh, but watch out for him, he's got an eye for the ladies. I'm surprised he can see anything. Why? Well, for the last five minutes, he's been trying to race off our Orton Special's dummy. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a shame. It's your eyesight that always goes first. Only last night, I was stroking my pussy and I thought all the hair was coming out. And was it? I was just rubbing it up the wrong way. <laughs> oh, I'm dreadfully sorry, Mr. Bird. I only just noticed you. Don't start fawning, Wagstaff. I've only dropped by to inform you that during Mr. Dunkley's absence, I've appointed Mr. Fenwick from Hardware to be your department manager. So give him all the help you can. And of course, sir. But it does go somewhat against the grain. I mean, during Mr. Dunkley's long service leave, I thought I might be considered for the post. Poppycock, Wagstaff, you're much too valuable on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've never had anybody who's as good as Wagstaff on the floor. <laughs> oh, pleasant company accepted, of course. <laughs> well, carry on. You've all done very well. <laughs> Much obliged to you, madam. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning, madam. Well, how are sales going, Mrs. Crawford? Well, in lingerie, pants are up and bras are going down. <laughs> Better than the other way around, Mrs. Crawford. Captain Wagstaff, you shouldn't say that in front of my young assistant. Oh, don't worry about me. I don't wear them. <laughs> I mean. oh, I'm sure that's against staff regulations. Still, I'm always prepared to look the other way. <laughs> Could have fooled me. <laughs> oh, I've no time for that man at all. He's got such cold eyes. Mm, and such hot hands. Well, I wouldn't know about that. If he tried anything with me, I'd slap his face. Oh, look, Mr. Humphreys has got a customer. <laughs> oh, I am glad. Then he won't sell him anything. Oh, it's a shame. He's so obliging and such a gentleman. You know, yesterday, when we were stuck alone together in the lift, he didn't try anything. <laughs> Did he? No, he just pressed the alarm bell and shouted for help. <laughs> That seems a very snug fit, Mr. Humphreys. Oh, very snug, Mr. McAvitz. Aren't the sleeves a bit long? Oh, you'll find they'll ride up with wear, sir. <laughs> Won't they, Mr. Humphreys? Oh, yes, most definitely, Mr. McAvitz. Excuse me, sir. I just lift the arms, see how much ride we have under here. <laughs> I, um, I think that's enough ride, sir. Oh. Don't you, Mr. Humphreys? Plenty of ride, enough to conduct a symphony orchestra. <laughs> Not in a sport jacket, Mr. Humphreys. It seems to me that it's shorter in front than in the back. That's because you're standing up straight, sir. People do tend to do that when they put on new garments. Oh, really? Oh, it is. You see, if I stand up like this, I'm up at the front, aren't I, Mr. Humphreys? <laughs> oh, we must say, Mr. Humphreys. Try stooping a little, sir. Oh, like it? A yeah. little more. <laughs> Lovely. Mm. How about a nice pair of trousers to complete the ensemble? <laughs> Definitely a new pair of trousers, Mr. Humphreys. What colour did you have in mind, sir? Well, uh, what about brown? Isn't that extraordinary? You know, it was just on the tip of my tongue to say brown. Very good choice, sir. Can't go wrong with brown. Mm -hmm. And you can wear any type of shoes, except black. <laughs> Do you know your inside leg, sir? Oh, about uh, 28, I think. Shall I check it, Mr. No, Mackey? I'll manage it, <laughs> don't you? You don't want it to slip again, do you? What? Your trust. <laughs> I can manage, Mr. Humphreys. Tape 
Mr. Humphrey. Uh, tape, Mr. Randall. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. Tape, Mr. Mankovic. Thank you, Mr. Humphrey. <laughs> now, let me see. Uh, ah, 28 and... Uh, what does it say? Made in England. <laughs> 28 and a half, Mr. Mangum. Thank you, Mr. Randall. Of course. It is, it? <coughs> <laughs> I do not think that is very funny, Mr. Randall. It really gave me a heart attack. <laughs> Bring me a pair of brown 28 and a half, Mr. Randall. I can't. have got a 32 medium in the fitting room. I'll get them for you, Mr. Mankovitz. You know, with your sales record, I wouldn't chance me arm with the practical jokes. Well, I've got to do something or relieve the monotony. Ooh, I know what you mean. I've noticed that your customer's tried on so many jackets, he's nearly worn his shirt out. <laughs> well, if he'd hurry and make his mind up, I want to get out of there and chat up Shirley. Who's that? Miss Nichols. Oh, we've got to first name terms now, have we? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's as far as we have got. I wouldn't have thought she was your type. No, she's not, but mine's got the measles. Now, lend us your pen. <laughs> it for you. But you might know your hand. I'll print it. <laughs> what do you want to say? Dear sexy knickers. <laughs> Dear sexy knickers. <laughs> Subtle? Yeah, well, if you never ask, you never get. <laughs> I don't half fancy you. Thank you. <laughs> Will you just write it down? Now meet me outside at 5.30 and we'll get it together. Outside at 5.30. <laughs> Glad to see romance isn't dead. Oh, are we taking that one, sir? Well, I like the pattern, but the jacket is a bit tight under the arms. Well, that's the biggest one we've got. Well, they oh. do vary, sir. Perhaps you'd like to try on a pair of trousers. Well, we're fine if we can get another one for you. <laughs> what are you talking about? That's the only one we've got. Well, I know that. Come here. <laughs> this is a wrinkle worth knowing. Now, you've heard of putting the boot in. This is what's known as putting the knee in. You see, you get the knee in the armhole like that, and you pull it just till you hear the stitches go. <laughs> That's clever. OK, send the other one. Oh, that's the trick to every try. Yes, the trick with this is to make sure the customer gets it home before the sleeves drop off. <laughs> well, I'm coming, Mr. Mankovitz. Good news, sir, I found one. Oh. oh, yes, that's much better. All the difference in the world, sir. Uh, Think these sleeves are long enough? I, I wouldn't uh, pull too hard on those. They'll probably ride down with wear. Oh. Yes, now look, are you sure the pattern on this is the same as the other jacket? This one looks rather uh, stronger to me. I can assure you, sir, it is identical. Well, I'm not often wrong about these things. You are this time, sir. <laughs> well, nevertheless, I would like to see the other jacket so I could compare them and satisfy myself. You would, would you say? Just a minute. Mr. Humphreys! What is it? The customer would like to try on the smaller jacket that he just tried on. <laughs> what a pity, I've just sold it. <laughs> Too bad, sorry, sir. They're selling like hotcakes today. Well, there is something wrong here. What is it, sir? Well, when I go like that, one sleeve is shorter than the other. I see. Mm. How often do you go like that? <laughs> Unless you're a midget pianist. <laughs> yes, perhaps you're right. Look, the trousers are a bit worried that they're too tight. Yeah. <laughs> you use a shooting stick, sir. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes, they're definitely catching me. Yeah. Under the... Yes! Oh. <laughs> Fortunately, they do vary too, sir. I'll get you another pair if you get yeah. them off. Yes. <laughs> well, they seem all right to me, sir. Um, what do you think, Mr. Humphrey? Aren't they a bit long? Well, they are being worn long these days. <laughs> it's very true, Mr. Humphreys. Jacket snug, trousers long. Not only that, they help keep your shoes polished. Uh, thank you, Mr. Randall. That is, if they don't ride up too much with wear. Thank you, Mr. Randall. <laughs> now, sir, if you'd like to slip them off, I'll pack them up with the jacket. Are you sure these will be all right? Oh, sir. Would I let you go out of here with them if they weren't? <laughs> Sale, Mr. Mankovic. I'll make up the bill, Mr. Humphreys. How did the other jacket fit? Very snugly, Mr. Humphreys, and I'm just about to find the other pair of trousers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need trousers, Mr. Randall. <laughs> you could have told me before. You've gone mad, Mr. Randall. <laughs> Uh, 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 the customer's crutch was uh, a bit tight. <laughs> I, I was just stretching them. You appear to have succeeded beyond your wildest dreams. 
This is a very serious matter. Mr. Humphrey, is you free? I'm free, Captain Wagstaff. Ask Mr. Mankiewicz if he's free to step this way. Mr. Mankiewicz, are you free to step this way? I am free, Mr. Humphrey. Step this way. <laughs> Do you encourage your assistants to try and stretch trousers when they don't fit? Certainly not. Do we, Mr. Humphrey? Certainly not, Mr. Mankiewicz. We give them the same pair back and say we found a larger size. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm afraid I can't deal with this, Mr. Randall. Our senior man, Mr. Mankovitz, will carry on with your customer while I place these before Mr. Fenwick. And, Mr. Randall, hold yourself in readiness. <laughs> what was the customer's waist measurement? A type 44. And the inside leg? A ticklish 32. <laughs> you should have tried the reduced rail. It's not your day, is it? If I don't get that note to Miss Nichols, it won't be my night, either. Well, if Captain Wagstaff finds you over there, you might as well ask for your cards and resign with dignity. Well, how am I going to deliver it? I'll try and attract her attention and get her over here. Well, if I wave, do you think she'll come across? Well, they usually do when I wave. <laughs> She's seen us. Good. Beckon her over. <laughs> That's torn it. Uh, Miss Nichols, will you take over, please? Uh, Mr. Humphreys wants a word with me. Talk your way out of this one. <laughs> Are you free, Mr. Humphreys? Yeah, Mrs. Crawford. I don't want to get you into trouble. No, and vice versa. <laughs> but you were marvellous to me yesterday in the lip. <laughs> Am I to understand you want something for my department, Mrs. Crawford? Mm, yes, she does, Mr. Mankiewicz, but I don't know how to gift wrap it. <laughs> I was just thanking Mr. Humphreys for being so good in the lift yesterday when we got stuck between floors. I see. <laughs> and I do hope I'm not going to get him into any trouble this morning over this little affair. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me if I'm wrong, Mr. Humphreys, but I made to understand that yesterday you got Mrs. Crawford into trouble in the lift, and this morning you had an affair with her in her department. <laughs> Mr. Mankiewicz, if you believe that, may I introduce you to Father Christmas? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I really could have done without this today, Wagstaff. I've hardly settled in. Quite right, Mr. Fenwick. Insensitive, I call it. Thank you, Cocker. You seem to be the only one around here to appreciate the needs of management. All part of the service, Mr. Fenwick, sir. Let's see, now there'll be uh, five dollars to win, ten dollars to place, horse number eight. Uh, uh, thank you, Cocker. That will be all. Yes, sir. Uh, you'll be taking your tea in your office here, of course. And in keeping with your new position, you will be getting executive service. What's the difference? I'll give the tea bag an extra jiggle and throw in a chocolate teddy bear. <laughs> it makes it all worthwhile, that climb to the top. Now to the business in hand. Randall, do you mean that you actually yourself tore these trousers because we didn't have a larger size? Now, what was this? Temper? Ah, no, sir. You see, it happened like this. Mr. Humphreys need the jacket. You mean Mr. Humphreys needed the jacket? Let's get our tenses right. No, no. I need the jacket. <laughs> you need it now? No. I need it then. <laughs> you mean you needed it then? If I may clarify the situation. Thank you, Captain Wagstaff. It does seem to have got out of hand. Yes, it's a matter of spelling, sir. Spelling? Uh, yes, sir. You were spelling need with an N, and Mr. Humphreys was using a K. Oh, you mean like kneading dough. Is that right, Mr. Randall? Yes, I needed the dough, but he didn't want the jacket. <laughs> <laughs> so you needed it to make it more supple, which is why you needed the jacket. You made a call, Captain Wagstaff. That is what I said in the first place. Uh, nearly right, sir. But what we're trying to explain, sir, and coming from hardware, you wouldn't be aware of it. But there is a method, and I frown upon it myself, to enlarge the armholes of a jacket. And the method is to knee the jacket with a K. I'm aware of how you spell jacket, Captain Wagstaff. Yeah, look, uh, <laughs> perhaps if you just slip your jacket off, sir, I can show you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now, the method, as I understand it, is to pull until some of the stitches go. Until some of the stitches go? Oh, it doesn't harm the jacket, it just loosens it up a bit. Yes, I think it might be better if you loosened up your own, Captain Wagstaff. Oh, very well, sir. Now, sir, if you're listening carefully, I hold the jacket so, and I pull so. I can't hear any stitches going. Perhaps it's been done already. <laughs> what makes you say that? I sold it to you. Yes. <laughs> 
Well, this is obviously a highly undesirable practice, and I shall have to decide what the penalty will be. Is he going to put the black cap on? <laughs> yes, I think we will deduct the cost of the trousers from this week's commission, Mr. Randall. And judging by your figures, from next week's commission, and the week after that... All right, thank you. That'll be all. Thank you, Mr. Fenning. Thank you, Mr. Fenning. Uh, thank you, thank you, and thank you again. <laughs> now what are you doing? I'm going to deliver the note to Miss Nichols by airmail. <laughs> Miss by a mile. You better go and get that before Wagstaff finds it. Where are you going, Mr. Randall? Ah, oh, yes, Captain Wagstaff. I'm just uh, stretching my legs. Back to your area, Mr. Randall. Bum, it's like being in Colbert. <laughs> He's seen it. He's picking it up. Do something about that, will you, Mrs. Crawford? What have you got there? I don't know. Captain Wagstaff's just given it to me. <laughs> oh, it's a note. Hand me my glasses, Miss Nichols. Thank you. <laughs> Dear sexy Nichols. <laughs> I don't half fancy you. Meet me outside at 5.30 and we'll get it together. <laughs> oh, I say. You know, I didn't know you had sexy knickers. Actually, they're directoires. But some men get quite worked up about them. <laughs> what about directoire knickers? Aren't they like bloomers? Well, they've got an air of mystery about them, you know. <laughs> well, they did in the war anyway. <laughs> I suppose all those bombs coming down made it more exciting. You gonna go? Certainly not. I mean, from the tone of this note, I couldn't possibly. But after all, he is head of the department, and I am at a loose end. <laughs> not surprised in direct one, Nickers. That will do, Miss Nichols. I'll have to give a reply, I suppose, but I, I'm, I'll be discreet and use the phone. She's read the note and she's picked up the phone. You think she's phoning head office? <laughs> That's our phone. Tell her I've gone downstairs. What stairs? These stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Gents ready me in. Would you connect me with Captain Wagstaff, please? Just a moment. Captain Wagstaff, are you free? <laughs> yes, I'm free. Telephone for you. While you're down there, I should write out your resignation. <laughs> the Captain Wagstaff speaking. Hello, Captain Wagstaff. This is Sexy Nichols. <laughs> <laughs> Would you mind repeating that? <laughs> this is Sexy Nichols. <laughs> Yes, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> uh, pardon me, but um, am I speaking to a customer? Oh, naughty boy, customer indeed. <laughs> I won't promise anything, but I'll meet you outside the staff entrance at 5.30. <laughs> how shall I know you? What do you mean, how will you know me? You sent me a note. Uh, to whom am I speaking? Do you mean to say you don't know? Well, I've no idea. Oh, thank goodness for that. <laughs> what did he say? Well, he implied he never sent me a note. To whom is it I am speaking to, he says, in that royal signal's voice of his. There's his note, there in your hand. Well, if he didn't intend it for me... It must be for me. Have you shown him any encouragement? <laughs> I haven't shown him anything. <laughs> oh, but I'm certainly going to give him a piece of my mind. Quite right. Fancy asking a junior out. <laughs> Captain Wagstaff, please. I'll trim his feathers. Has he ever, um, molested you, my dear? Well, he did have a funny look on his face when he offered to take my corsets down. <laughs> what? From the top shelf in the stock room. Now the lady on the phone for Captain Wagstaff. Oh. Uh, Captain Wagstaff here, yeah? who is this? This is Sexy Knickers here. Anything I can do, Captain Wagstaff? No, 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 just a routine inquiry. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I wouldn't go out with you if you're the last man in gents ready made. Just hold this for me, would you, Mr. Humphreys? Certainly, Captain Wagstaff. Just because I let you take my courses down once doesn't mean 
Friday night bands. Is that a complaint, Mr. Humphries? In the manner of speaking, Mr. Mankovitz. Oh, and if I get any more of your old guff, I'll have you on the carpet. Uh, uh, mind what you say, Miss Nichols. I think Miss Nichols has said enough already. Now it would seem that some explanation is called for. You are right, Mr. Humphreys. Lizzie. <laughs> There's a lady here wants to get me on the carpet. <laughs> Perhaps it was meant for soft furnishings. <laughs> Do you think I could go home early, Mr. Mankovitz? Why aren't you feeling well, Mr. Randall? I'm expecting a heart attack. <laughs> well, I shall find out who wrote this note. Mrs. Crawford, I shan't rest until I get to the bottom of this. You know, this has never happened before. <laughs> Mr. Randall, get Mr. Humphreys a glass of water. Mr. Mankiewicz, are you free? Yes, I'm free, Captain Wagstaff. Mr. Humphreys? I don't really know, Captain Wagstaff. <laughs> and is Mr. Randall free? I'm probably going to be free for some time. <laughs> I have in my possession a billhead from this department on which is written the following. Dear sexy knickers, I don't half fancy you. Meet me outside at 5.30 and we'll get it together. <laughs> now, as head of the department, it is my duty to ask each of you if you wrote this note. Mr. Mankiewicz, did you write this? I don't even understand it. <laughs> Mr. Mankiewicz wouldn't say, dear sexy knickers. He'd say, dear sexy bloomers, wouldn't you, Mr. Mankiewicz? Oh, very much doubt it. <laughs> Mr. Randall, did you write this note? I can honestly say, Captain Wagstaff, I did not write that note. <laughs> well, in view of these denials, there is only one conclusion that I can come to. <laughs> <laughs> Shall I leave now or work till 5.30? <laughs> we leave your future in abeyance for the moment. What you will do is apologise to the ladies' department for the distress that you caused. Now? Yes, now. <laughs> Mrs Crawford, are you free? At the moment, Mr Humphreys. I'm afraid I've been a naughty boy. Oh, have you, Mr Humphreys? What have you been up to? Well, you know that note you got that you thought was from Captain Wagstaff? Yes. I wrote it. Oh, I should have known all along, shouldn't I? What? <laughs> oh, I've noticed the way you've been looking at me. <laughs> oh, but you're very naughty sending me notes. You should have just come up to me in the open and come out with it. Should I? <laughs> oh, so there's nothing to be ashamed of. You're more attractive than you think. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> it's 5.30. I'll put my hat on and I'll meet you outside as arranged and we'll uh, get it together. No. Are you being soft, sir? I'm hungry, right? Please. Are you being soft, sir? What would you like to see? If you'd like some swimming pants, you've got them plain or sloppy. You've also got some see through that really can your eat your. Oh, these are gay. There's plenty around there. And if you'd like a bit of flash, then try a plastic bag. What? I'm hungry, and I'm free.